What's up, people? Today is going to be more of a discussion, but I'm still going to drop a few court cases. But before we get into it, I'm going to, again, thank you, donors. Appreciate you guys. And if you want to donate, hit one of the donation buttons in the comment section. It'll be the pinned comment. Now, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscription button for your boy. And also, hit that bell notification so you can be notified when I'm uploading new content. So now, that's out the way. I wanted to get into a conversation about the shooting death of Antoine Rose by the Philadelphia police officer whose name is Michael Rosfeld. Now, the reason why I bring this one up is because it's really simple because the things that as I'm getting more in the know of investigating the actual causes and effects of this case, the things that surprise me are this because a lot of what I've been saying is being illustrated in this one case. First fun fact, there is no body camera evidence from any police officer that was on the scene of that shooting. The next curious or interesting fact is the fact that there is also no dashboard camera from that incident from any of the police officers out there. Now, does that particular part department have dashboard and police body cams? Yeah. But now, you remember a few videos back, probably about 10 or more, where I spoke about 76% of all video does not come from police officers. It comes from bystanders. 76%. Now, does it surprise you with that number being as high as it is that there was no body cam footage or dash cam footage? Yet the police always tell you, don't worry about it, we're recording it too. What difference does it make if your recording never makes it to court? And the fact that there was none and just like I stated right before in the Nevada and the Las Vegas um, video where the young man was stopped and the first thing the lieutenant said again the lieutenant the lieutenant said getting out the car was I'm in fear for my life Michael Rosefeld said those exact statements. He was in fear for his life for a young man that was running away from him and as we've learned to as we come to discover was unarmed. So he was in fear for his life to where he had to use deadly force for somebody that was running away from him. Now there are a few other things that he said that came back to be a flat out lie which is the reason he's being charged now but here is the most interesting fact there are generally cases that we don't see justification or justice done when a police officer shoots a unarmed minority let's put it that way but more often unarmed black male and this one I do believe that we will see some form of justice simply because there was a case that I stated where the supervisor is liable for the actions of the subordinate and that case is Steedle v. Furman the reason why there is a high probability is because the one thing everybody does is cover their own ass and in this case you have a young man that was fired from his police duties at another at another police precinct 
that had just been sworn in minutes prior to shooting an unarmed person in the back, which is a violation of not only police procedure, but it's a violation of all humanity and human rights. And that brings me to the fact of, I've stated in wrongful death suits, they need to be filed immediately. There does not have to be a conviction for wrongful death. Just ask OJ, because he was found guilty in civil court for wrongful death, but was acquitted of the deaths of Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. The elements of it is the fact that in Michael Rossfield's um, indictment or charge list, there was a statement of intentionally, knowingly, and recklessly causing the death of Antoine Rose. Now, a couple videos ago, I spoke about the use of words. Why were those words chosen? Intentionally. Because you remember the one thing that I spoke about is the most difficult to prove in any case is intent. The reason they used intent, he intentionally did something. Because now the proof of the burden of proving intent is off the table. Knowingly, you're gonna hear me say something about mens rea. That is guilty mind. He can't use or can't claim a moment of insanity. So he was competent and recklessly. Recklessly is another form of negligence. Now, let me speed on over to wrongful death. The element of wrongful death, because the burden of proof is a lot lower than being in a criminal proceeding. The element that is satisfied for wrongful death is negligence or intent. Now, both of those were put in his criminal charges. So, in a civil case, those are an automatic slam dunk. Why? Because he knowingly pulled out his police issue firearm. He intentionally caused bodily harm by firing not once, not twice, but three times that resulted in the death of Antoine Rose, knowing there was no threat with him running away. There was no imminent danger. And because of that, acting outside of police procedures, knowingly outside of police procedures, why? Because he wasn't a rookie. He's been on multiple police forces for multiple years. So he understood his duties every step of the way. And the first one is Tennessee v. Garner. 471 U.S. 1, 1985. The Supreme Court held that under the Fourth Amendment, when a law enforcement officer is pursuing a fleeing suspect, the officer may not use deadly force to prevent escape unless the officer has probable cause. I'm going to stop right there for a few seconds. Probable cause. I've stated that a number of times and probable cause can only come from a crime and again sure v color a crime is damage to person damage to property or police witnessing a felony now i'm gonna finish this unless the officer has probable cause to believe that the suspect poses a significant threat of death or serious physical injury to the officer or others or there were situations to which the officer had observed actions that resembled a crime now 
and to speed off from that we also know that in no account did Michael Rumsfeld state that he had witnessed anything other than a possible description of a conveyance or automobile that had been involved in something he did not witness anything so therefore he did not have probable cause I'm gonna say that one more time he did not have probable cause because he did not witness any felony being committed he only saw something that resembled the description now we also know about the crime itself has to be witnessed or it has to be damaged to personal property. He knew that possibly a crime had been committed because he got a report of damage to a person and property. He did not witness it. So therefore, the element was out. There was no probable cause. Was there enough probable cause to stop the conveyance? Yes. But was there a probable cause to result in him firing? No. Now, the second portion of that is another case, Graham B. Connor, 490 U.S. 386, 1989. An objective, reasonable standard should apply to a free citizen's claim that the law enforcement officers use excessive force in the course of making an arrest, investigatory stop, or other seizure of his person. Now, the reason that they are there are police procedures and means of doing or conducting an arrest or even conducting a, a detainment. The reason why the free man has rights, human rights, is because God gave them to him. And as a police officer, you chose to take an oath to be a servant to the free man. Now, your procedures are to act in accordance of a servant to a free man. The procedures are set forth for the pres preservation of life of not the officer but the free citizen and what has happened is most officers have forgotten that they are servants and in this case Michael forgot his duty is for the preservation of life not of himself but of those he serves which is why they look to enforce safety issues versus actual crime. Because safety is for the preservation of life. The actions that are detrimental to life itself cannot be the first option. The excessive force claim came when Michael Rosfeld decided that he was not going to follow police procedure and he was going to apply a force that was lethal. I'm going to say that one more time. He decided to apply a force that was lethal to someone that was not an imminent threat. That's what makes the force excessive. That's also what violates Tennessee v. Garner keep those in mind and this is also why not only should a wrongful death suit be filed immediately but a conviction is not necessary for it and someone that decides to put on the uniform of a brave person and choose not to serve shouldn't be entitled to anything that they benefited from that so until next time